Welcome to episode 106 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies plus tips, apps, and gear. I'm your host, Dave Ginsburg, and my co-host, Warren Sklar, is at the beach this week, so he is not here, but even better, I've got a great guest, uh, returning guest, Mr. Bob Fairbairn. How are you doing, Bob? I am wonderful this afternoon, Dave, and yourself? Doing well. Thanks for uh, coming on to the show. It's, I appreciate it. Uh, last time I checked, last time you were here, it's been almost a year. I, I was like, what am I doing? We got to get you on here more often here. So I'm glad we got you back. And uh, we'll talk no about No problems. The, yeah, I've been, I've been sitting here waiting for a year, dear, Dave. Yeah, I, I'm I sorry. I didn't it's think a, you were, but... Um, <laughs> So uh, we've got some news this week. Uh, we've, t- we've talked plenty about WWDC, so you won't hear too much about that for the next uh, few uh, <laughs> months, probably, uh, other than just we'll give you some uh, insights of what's going on with iOS 14 and, and such. But um, we got news, and uh, we're definitely talking about beta this week. And uh, uh, I'm going to tell you though, my final discussion about the T-Mobile home internet that I talked about back, I think it was on episode 103 with uh, Dave Hamilton, and uh, what, what my final thoughts are on that. And uh, we got some discussions with about uh, Apple TV, and we'll get into that shortly as well as some tips and anything else we come up with. And Bob may even talk about some audio things because he is the audio file. We like to talk about that oh, stuff. So. Get to talk uh, about audio? Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Okay. If so, we have time. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, dig right into the news this week. And um, first story, Apple has reportedly canceled some of the Apple Arcade games and I think it's changing direction. This was actually from Tidbits uh, and uh, Bloomberg is also good. Always good to get uh, the, the scoop about what's going on with Apple, Mark Herman. Uh, and uh, the company is obviously struggling to keep people subscribed to Apple's arcade ser- gaming service. I stopped. I mean, I'm not a gamer, so I, I, I really stopped playing. Um, so they, they're, they're canceling a lot of, uh, not a lot of games, but some that are just probably just not fitting within the, uh, the package. But there, there are some other games out there that are played. I don't know. I don't know about you. Are you have are you subscribed to arcade? Have you played any of those games? I I subscribe for a couple three months, and really, I'm not much of a gamer. So, yeah. so it was fun. Like. The games were very engaging, but I just don't have the time. So yeah, yeah, same here. And and yeah, you know, some people love games, and I I have nothing against it. Uh, but uh, I was. Uh, I was, it was interesting to see what Apple is going to do with this because uh, they did invest quite a bit in, in, into it. And it's, I think it's one of the services along with News Plus uh, that's having a bit of a challenge. I think News Plus is probably doing a little better than Arcade is, but, uh, but I think uh, we're going to be doing okay with uh, the data. But it'll well, be interesting to see where it goes here. Um, and then um, Apple uh, has also uh, with their uh, Apple, Apple Apple card, the Apple credit card, uh, they have a um, promo that if you don't have the card right now, if you're a brand new customer, you sign up for the Apple ser- the service, they will give you a $50 bonus for signing up, uh, making a purchase of any Apple product would include like Apple Music or the Apple TV Plus or the app, any app store purchases, and then you you would be allowed to use that fifty dollars. So do you have a, you have an Apple Card, uh, Bob? Uh, no, I keep that pretty tight. I uh, yeah? I, I don't. Uh, I got to be careful. I I would be tempted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do get three percent cash back, which is nice. So um, uh, yeah, so, so you, you you gotta you gotta you can't beat that. And there's always a lot of deals. So yeah, I. Been, oh yeah there's having risks too because yeah you could buy right now you could buy any apple products including up to, even a pencil if you wanted to and you can get 12 months free financing with the card so <laughs> uh which is crazy with the pencil but i could see it with you know buying a macbook pro or uh any of that kind of stuff but uh, it, uh it's, but if uh, you're outfitting if you're outfitting yourself for a system or something like that and and you understand what you're doing i th- I, I don't have a problem with that i think that's fine yeah yeah uh, and then uh, following up on that story, this just got announced. To, this actually just uh, was uh, today as we record this. Uh, Apple has launched an actual website to pay your Apple Card bill online because cur- before you were only able to do it through the, the wallet app, which was kind of restricting. Um, so you go to card.apple.com and the website is there. You sign in and uh, you can pay your bill and look at your statements and all that stuff right on the website. Um, is that have you have you tried it, Dave? Is that use the two factor uh, authentication um, stuff or not? Yes, because it's Apple. It, it will because you're gonna, you're going to use your 
Apple ID to sign into it. So it if right. it's not, yeah, if it's okay. not it hadn't been signed in with your browser, yeah, you'll definitely get the two factor. That's definitely important. I agree. Yep. That's Security. that's good safety. Yeah, I figured they would, but um, so they continue to expand upon more ways to manage your account. Um, and this is this is this is another addition. Um, the there, there was even, I didn't bring the story up. There was even a story about uh, folks who, who did not qualify for the card. There actually, there's actually the, the Goldman Sachs was going to actually work with you to see how you would qualify. Maybe you pay off on a credit card or if you uh, try to improve your credit uh, a little better, they're, they're actually, they want people to have this card. So they're, they're I, I, it's the first time I've ever seen, you know, a bank actually wanting people to get their card uh, because they know how passionate Apple uh, people are, people who love Apple products. So. Um, and, uh, Interesting. yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, it, it's definitely, uh, def- I, I like the card. I think I, I've been happy with it. Uh, 3% is nice on, on a lot of purchases. You get 2% on oh, uh, yeah. Apple when you use Apple pay and then 1% on everything else. But, uh, no, you, you got a little nice little bonus in your, ca- in your Apple cash card there each month. And, uh, you could buy other stuff or just, or you could put it towards a bill and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a good deal. So, um, and then, uh, other story that came out was uh, this was nine to five. Mac Tim Cook is going to have to, or he doesn't have to. He agreed to testify in Congress uh, this month. This is me in July uh, during a hearing on big tech antitrust. And of course, it's not only Tim Cook; it's also Mark Zuckerberg. It's also Sundar Picard from Google, and also Jeff Bezos from Amazon. Hmm, the four biggest companies that have questionable <laughs> practices when it comes to. With things apple of course of course the big story was with uh with the app store and that uh, hey email app and uh that kind of th- triggered a lot of things did you have any thoughts about about this whole antitrust thing it's sort of i i have a problem with squ- squishing rules around for special people yeah. so twitter squishes rules around and facebook squishes rules around for some public figures and just because somebody else doesn't mean they're right and it doesn't mean they're wrong either. So I, 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 I don't, didn't follow it that much. I don't think I need an email app that's tied to a specific <laughs> service. That's not portable. Yeah. So I, I haven't even looked at it. Yeah. It's uh, but just more than more than any trust of anything. That, uh, well, yeah. It, it, is it really antitrust? That's the question, right? That, I don't that, know. That's what you have to ask is, is, is it really, yeah. uh, but four of those companies, you know, have quite a stranglehold on a lot of technologies of the, of the four they're going to be speaking at that, uh, at that yeah. hearing. So uh, it, um, it will be interesting to see what happens there. Um, I don't expect much, but y- you never know. Somebody, somebody may, uh, somebody may decide to make some changes. It would be interesting if they could figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So well, stay tuned. You're going to be hearing about that soon here. So. Um, and then I just mentioned Apple news a little bit ago, uh, Apple news. No, now they no longer have, um, the, the New York times, not that they really had it anyway. Uh, the New York times yeah. decided uh, Monday to, to exit with its partnership with Apple news, uh, and said it's struggling to compete with large tech companies and readers attention. Give me a break. I mean, the New York times out of all the newspapers is probably doing the, the better, better than most. Um, they've, they've got a lot of subscribers. I mean, it just, you know, right up there with the wall street journal. Uh, and the Wall Street Journal is allowing some content on the Apple News. Um, but uh, the, the, the article says this actually I linked uh, to, to Mac Stories. And, uh, yes. And uh, it, uh, they're saying this is a bit, a bit of a major loss for Apple, according to the statement. Because uh, mm. even though the New York Times only offered a few news stories a day, but losing access to it, it's, you know, it's a prestigious paper. It's not like the Chicago Tribune. <laughs> so, well... Um, Okay, the trip's okay. It's fine, but but the Times has got a little more cred. I agree. Yeah. They really didn't offer a lot of stories and stuff on there. That's what I said. Uh, and there wasn't a lot of New York Times content on Apple News, and it wasn't on News Plus. It was just on News, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. just on News, right? Yeah. 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 They didn't want to. New York Times didn't want to get into that. I mean, a lot of the other newspapers are the same way. The, um, the Washington Post isn't uh, part of it um los angeles times um you know some of the some of the other papers are not part of this the news plus part of it um but uh yeah it's gonna be interesting to see what happens here i I think um news plus will continue to evolve and it it seems like it's uh it seems like it's doing okay but it probably could do better and i'm sure a lot of uh, publishers are still questioning you know 
is it is it worth their while to be part of it? So I think that's a tough call for them. Um, yeah. It's there's it's it's a crazy crazy methodologies we've got these days for you know grabbing attention. There's so many different places to grab your attention that yep. it's hard to get eyeballs. Absolutely. And then uh, nine to five Mac, we have a story about BMW. BMW, of course, that was announced during the the, the keynote yeah. uh, last week that they are going to have a uh, car key as a as a tool to be able to unlock your car. Well, BMW just added support in their connected app uh, ahead of the iOS 13.6 public release, which we'll be talking about in just a second. Um, so they they officially announced that, uh, that, that like I said, that key last month. Um, in the release notes with uh, BMW, it's explained that users will be able to create a key card um, in their application and then uh, access it from the wallet um, or from their iPhone or the Apple Watch. Um, so it's interesting to see, it's interesting to see here because, uh, they, they had only announced one, one car model that was, this was going to support, well, apparently it's going to support others. Um, it's got in here okay. range of models from one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, X5, X7, X6, a lot of miles, but they had to have been manufactured after this month, <laughs> July 1st. Uh, <laughs> that's what it says. So, so while this is a broad range of different cars, it's limited to only the newest models that were manufactured. So probably it has to have the code uh, the, or the, or the software um, in, in the car to be able to uh, access it. But I can't imagine why they wouldn't add all the uh, software I, Maybe updates. they can't figure out how to update the root, tr- root security certificates yeah. in the car or something, or they don't want to be able to update the root security certificates in the car. Right. So. So uh, this, of course, is only going to be uh, compatible to the 10R, 10S, and newer phones, 11. Oh, Pro. sure. So you won't, it won't anything, nothing older than the 10R. So to be able to access this functionality anyway. But those of you who drive a BMW, I tend to think usually have a new iPhone. <laughs> so in most cases, I well, uh, did you did you ask BMW for a loaner so you could test it? Yeah, no such luck for me. No, <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, uh, so it, it will, but the thing is it will have to run iOS 13.6 uh, in order for it to be, uh, to, uh, in order to work. So that has not been announced yet. And of course, um, we, uh, uh, we'll move right on out of the news here into beta testing. Uh, uh, iOS 13.6 beta three was just released this week and you got two betas going on at once here now. So you got iOS 14 beta one and be- and, and 13.6 beta three. Um, I would, I would think Apple is going to be releasing this anytime now, um, because, uh, it is out in public. It's a public beta as well as the, uh, as well as the developers beta. And, um, they, uh, they just been having uh, struggles to keep up with, uh, uh people, we, everybody trying to keep up with all the betas that have been <laughs> over the last month and a half. Uh, There's a May, lot of stuff flying. Yeah. May 20th. And, and it may be even a little longer than that with uh, yeah, all the could. stuff that's come out. Yeah, it could. So are you, you running uh, iOS 14 on your phone? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. iOS okay. 14 and iPad OS. So, uh, yeah. and we're using uh, uh big Sur on the Mac right now yep. that we're I'm using here. So see uh, all back in the other room. Yeah. 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 So one of the things <laughs> I think is uh, the update for 13, six is going to, is it's uh, putting the groundwork for, as we mentioned uh, before in previous uh, episodes, Apple News Plus Audio and Apple uh, News Plus Audio will be available through that existing news app, which is giving you an audio ta- tab, allowing you to be able to actually listen to a news story. Uh, and, you know, that'll come in handy when you're driving, especially. Um, so they're they're going to be adding that uh, that pretty soon here. So yeah, that'll be that'll that'll be good. I my commute doesn't require that. So yeah, <laughs> recently, yeah, I think because is it's uh it's it hasn't been much. Uh, commuting going on right now so well but mine for years mine has been second floor to basement so yeah. <laughs> um and then uh i always start 14 since you're uh you would like to get your opinion uh, of what you think about ios 14 so far what are you finding uh, okay that you like and not oh like and- there's a couple of things that that are are fascinating um so mm-hmm. i just uh, i've just the the widgets on the home screen I didn't think meant much to me until I started using them. And they're actually pretty cool. Yeah. Um I've been playing back and forth a little bit. I have one of the widget stacks on my second home screen. 
And, uh, and then I only have two home screens now cause I got them all shoved off and I have one note, uh, which is, uh, my beta test note, which is all the stuff I'm making notes on, on betas. And I'm a little bit behind. I got to get a couple more notes in there. I've had a couple of things I need to report. I've reported a couple of things so far. Yeah. Um, I, again, beta one, I I'm surprised so far it has not, I haven't had any trouble really. Uh, I mean, there's a few things. There's a couple of apps that didn't work. Um, a couple of oddities in, in stuff getting filled in, in the, um, in the, um, uh, widgets. So if I, like I, I swipe over to, uh, uh, the left, um, widget screen, uh, the, there's one of them that's blank right now, the weather one's blank. And, and so it just little stuff like that. You right. expect that, and beta two could blow up in our faces. So just be prepared if you're if you're doing it. Um, no instabilities. Little bit of battery life down. Um, let's see what else. Um, a bunch of stuff on iPad that is fascinating. Though they're, they're it's different. The iPad the iPad is is not it's not in parallel. You know what I'm saying? There's no, some things that are changed, so you can't put the widgets over there. So, you know, we could talk about that if you want to, but, um, iPad again has been really stable. So, um, and I love the sidebars and the apps, things like that. Um, yep. that that's there, there's some just, it's just, it's, it feels smoother to me. I don't know if it, does that make sense to you? The iPad feels it smoother does. and maybe it's cause I've gotten more used to the, uh, using the keyboard, uh, the magic keyboard, but man, it's just, it's just, everything is just like, it's almost more relaxed, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm one, I'm running uh, iOS 14 on a 10 R I have, and then I have a first gen uh, iPad pro 12.9 okay. and that's, uh, that's what I'm running on those, on those two devices. And, uh, yeah, okay. so far I, I like the widgets. I, I like the stacks, which is neat because you can, you can go, you can have a widget right there and being able to flip through multiple widgets right into a stack that's right there. So it's on one page. Um, the, uh, the app, what are, what are your thoughts on the, uh, the app library? I, I like it. I just, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I like the fact that it's, uh, you're being forced to, to, to the way Apple thinks you, uh, want it organized. Um, well, to a certain extent, you're not being forced. I mean, it's, they have a, they have a process. You can turn it on and off. Right. right. Um, what I, what, there's an interesting thing that, that I'm not sure I'm, I'm not sure that I'm, I like the default. So I downloaded an app. So I needed to, I needed to work with someone in Europe uh, here this morning and they use telegram messenger. And so I installed telegram messenger. Well, when I install it, it automatically goes in the app library. It's not, so here I'm looking for the telegram messenger on my phone and I go, I can't find it. Oh, it's in the app library. So slide mm -hmm. down, hit T there it is. Boom. You know, you're done. So it's just, it, the muscle memory is not the same. And so I think that's, I think that's part of it. And uh, it, it, I think it's better than, Oh, that's on home screen 17. Right. Um, one of the things that's it, it's forced me to do is to, to organize my home screen <laughs> yeah. because now it's cool. I can, I, I can have more on there or less on there. And I've been very tempted. I've just opened the iPhone up here. I've been very tempted to move this, you know, uh, full width widget with weather and photos and, you know, all that stuff in it onto the main home screen and, and, and have two home screens. I, I'm not sure I'm going to do that yet, but, uh, works well. Um, I have not moved over to the, the new um, reminders. I'm staying with things and I still use fantastic Hal. So I haven't, I haven't really looked at the changes in calendar or reminders yet much. I don't know. Have you looked at any of the app changes? So I, I haven't done a lot of mail has got some nice stuff, but. Yeah. I haven't gone too deep in mail yet. Um, you know, I probably should. I hadn't, I even think of that. Um, and uh, I mean, the browser, obviously you've got some improvements there with security and, um, and it, it's, it, uh, it seems like it's working real well. So, but yeah, I just wanted to get your, you know, initial thoughts since you, you hadn't heard from you as it relates to what, um, iOS 14 is all about, but believe me, we're going to be covering it, uh, pretty extensively oh, yeah. over, over the next few months here before it really gets released. So I anticipate September release, I would think, um, and sure there'll be I, multiple, I would think so. I don't think anything and, would change. Yeah. yeah. So, um, the, um, uh, the only, the, uh, I was going to say the only thing that uh, Safari uh, just in comment to Safari, and I notice it more on the desktop, which is, you know, I know this is iOS, 
but no, okay. um, this new um, related technologies. Uh, yeah. Inter interrelated technologies, yes, very much so. Um, uh, they are bonded together at the cloud. How about that? There you go. The privacy report that comes up on my home screen. Uh, you know, the on when you when you open up the the default uh, uh, start page, uh, that's actually been fun to look at. Um, see who's uh, see what they're what they've decided is bad. <clears throat> I think I decide there's a few more things are bad than they do, but they decide a lot of things are bad and don't let them through. And I like that. I like that. That's been very nice. So in the last seven days, Safari's prevented 134 trackers from profiling you and we won't call anybody out. (laughs) Yeah. It's interesting to see how that tracker does work. Um, It's amazing what some of these websites, I mean, CNN is probably one of them. I see I, they yeah, that as an yeah. example. I mean, like 14 different ridiculous trackers that you're using. It's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's um, nuts. Uh, so it's uh, definitely going to be interesting. A lot more. It's gonna, we'll continue to uh, find out about stuff, and uh, we'll definitely bring it to you here. So. Yeah. And, and the other thing you're talking about, syn- the synergy of the two, so that you scroll down here, and then my iPhone, my you know, the, the iPad's upstairs, but my iPhone's right here in front of me, and it's showing me the, uh, you know, I can see what's from my different devices here, and the iPhone's close, so it's the first one, it's the most one up front, and it shows all the websites that are open on the iPhone, one, one click, and I've got it, so the whole continuity thing is improving across all the devices rather nicely. Uh, I haven't played with uh, the headphone switching yet. The uh, AirPod pro switching. I don't, I don't know if that's working right yet or not. Yeah. No, actually, anyway. I'm gonna, we have the, I'm going to talk about that as a tip here in a little bit here. Um, okay. I'll do an iOS 13. Uh, so we want to talk about current uh, because most normal well, people aren't running hey, iOS 14. 13 so. is current. Okay. That's what I said. We have to talk, talk yeah. to the norm, the people who are using the production stuff. So, um, Oh yeah. Any, any, any other thoughts? Or want to move on about the iOS on, 14? On, on 14? No, I, I just, uh, uh, on you know, my wife's old SE finally died and we got her mm-hmm. a new SE and uh, you know, it's bigger. There's a couple complaints that, but she's much happier with that. I, right. I've played with that a little bit. Man, that phone is fast. Yeah, <laughs> we've talked about it. it yeah, is. that that is um, for the price performance ratio on that device is pretty amazing. I, I yeah, <laughs> the reviewers I, I are all right. I don't think they've announced any numbers yet as far as how many sold, but uh, and then usually they don't. But I would not no. be at all surprised that it's selling very well. Oh yeah, I'm I'm sure it is. I'm uh, it's it's just it's right there down the middle where you want it to be. So yeah. All right, let's go ahead and uh, we'll move on here. Um, I wanted to, to follow up on my uh, my testing of the T-Mobile home internet uh, that I had talked about over on episode 103. If you want to hear about that, with Dave Hamilton. Um, my final decision was uh, it's going back. <laughs> uh, I think the nice, yeah, because you at most get thirty megabit speeds down, and then you get about about ten or twelve up. And you know, for I guess for most people who don't really care about it having real high speeds, I think that is that's I guess that's fair. Um, it really also depends in your area where you where you live as far as because it's only it's it's only LTE so. Uh, folks oh, okay. so, so they don't have 5g yet and that's that's the other that that's what uh, warren and i talked about uh, previously as well so uh that's uh that's kind of disappointing as well so but for 50 dollars a month it's a lot of money for for having uh then when i can get it i can use my my iphone as a hotspot if i really wanted to you know uh okay so tell me a little bit more about it dave it's a little bo- it's a black box of some sort put you in yeah, your house it's a, you it's a, yeah it, it's a uh, actual box that they give you it's an actual uh, gateway and router let me all okay pull up, i'll pull up my camera for you so you can see it because you hadn't seen this before this this is it i here. haven't seen it before okay so, that's, you can, so you can it's still a black box here, white so. box uh, yeah it's white yeah and then not so, pink <laughs> and and this does work wirelessly, so you don't have to have it plugged in. So this has a battery built into it, so you can bring this anywhere ah, in the house. Um, so that is one unique thing it does do. So if you want to yeah. be near, if you want, you know, always you say you want to be closest to the router. Well, this could be anywhere in the house. Of course, the, the, I think the battery it's it's the same kind of battery like you see in like the lighting and the cameras that kind of it, it, it's you know it's it's a good decent sized battery, and it probably lasts okay. a few hours. So you could you could bring you definitely could bring this. Uh, you're not supposed to bring it outside your house, but 
I can't see how <laughs> I, I can't see how uh, how people can it, it can stop them from from doing that. Um, other than T-Mobile will see it because it'll see what what uh, tower yeah, it's see on, what, and, what cells it's on. Um, and then um, they say, "Okay, this isn't your house." <laughs> Uh, who knows? Uh, well, what's interesting is thirty by ten is pretty reasonable, right? Now, uh, and that's for, in max. That's people, in max. I mean, I was there times. Okay, there were times fifteen, you know, twelve, okay, twenty. Yeah, yeah. So but it's LTE. It, I mean, it, it, it can't expect. You know, I'm not. I'm not expecting gigabit Ethernet. So, well, <laughs> but if you, speed, if it's so. got a, if it bonds some channels together, that it could do a pretty good job. Interesting device. Yeah. Yeah, it was interesting. interesting it was idea. interesting. I was I was glad that T-Mobile was allowing me to try it out for a month, and they gave me a credit okay. for for the month. And I said, "Great, I'll try it out." Um, but uh, okay. just a, just a side note: everybody does, if isn't aware of this. If you are a T-Mobile customer right now, and you have at least two or three lines, and you're on the the T-Mobile One plan, which is the older plan, or the T-Mobile Magenta plan, they're offering a free uh, a free line. Um, so if you want to sign up for a free line. Um, you just go on and the talk say, Hey, I want to take advantage of that free line option. And they'll, they'll sign you up, send you either a SIM card, or if you decide you want to get another phone, you could pay for the phone and then, uh, and then, uh, have that line for free and not have to pay for the service part of it. Um, so T-Mobile's I'm going to have to check that out. I don't think I need one, but, uh, <laughs> I didn't think I did either, but I mean, free is free. <laughs> so it's always good yeah, to have an extra for how line. Long? What's it, you know, <laughs> no, they say it's for the life of the, you keep it active as long as you don't cancel any lines. So uh, if you start okay. canceling lines, then yeah, then they'll, they'll they make because they're giving me a little bit of a hassle at first. I said, well, I don't understand. I just, I, I, I let you guys know a week after I, less than a week after I got the, t- the home internet because they were treating that as a cancellation. I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense. So I, I got uh, yeah. a guy, Jason here. He's actually sitting, uh, ho- holding on in the chat here for T-Mobile right now, which is great. And then their, their customer service is second to none. I'm telling you. Um, and they, they've been good to me. Yeah. yeah they're, they've been very good. And uh, just wait, the SIM card's supposed to be coming in the mail today. So I just set it up and put it in an iPhone and, uh, and try it out. So, um, so well, that, if, that, yeah, that'll, that'll help you. I'm sure. Yep. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's going back. <laughs> well, see, I could see where as a backup, it would be pretty good. Uh, We use a, we use a, in in some of the businesses that I help, we use the little um, uh, Netgear. Is Netgear? Yeah, I think it is a hotspot. It's similar thing only it's, you know, it's physically a little bit smaller and uh, we use it for uh, fallback and stuff like that. Uh, The one thing also I forgot to mention is this service does have unlimited data. So and it's, oh. it's it's truly unlimited so if you it's just like oh bob bob has to look at that <laughs> for home use it, you know it might it might be something that you might look at i mean if you want i mean like i said it, it's okay it's 50 bucks a month and, and and they don't it's not everywhere you got you have to actually see if it's uh, it's offered in your if, area, if it's so. available where you are okay right not everybody has it yet even even the rep was still new at it he didn't even know about a lot of the stuff on how to how okay. to handle it so uh, um, that's it's it's another tool in the belt oh yeah i mean it's yeah. another yeah. another expense though <laughs> well but for i have some businesses who have who are on the edge with inter, their internet providers every now and then in the in even in the chicagoland area here and uh they need a fallback every now and then so yeah you know it so. might be cost of doing business yeah maybe so check it out yeah all right, uh, we'll let's go. Let's go and move on. I, I, we haven't talked too much about Apple TV lately, so I thought hmm, this would be a good opportunity, especially the fact that there's been some interesting announcements as of late about costs and and, and services, specifically YouTube TV. <laughs> I start, you know, when YouTube TV first came out, I thought, wow, this is amazing, and it was forty dollars a month. And I thought, that's great. That's such a great uh, bargain. And it had unlimited DVR. Granted, the, the channels were limited, but it had your, it had your locals and most of the, the popular uh, uh, channels. So then, of course, it starts to grow. They've had a couple extra channels, and then the price goes from $40 to $55 a month. So I canceled at that point. Uh, and then, uh, so that this is going over maybe a six or eight month span. So then now you go another six months later, they raise it again to, to $60 a month. So now you're at uh, 30% increase uh, 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 from, from less than a year. So you'll be like, man, this, this makes no sense to me. And, and, you know, 
we've always had the big topic, cord cutting, cord cutting. What's, uh, you want to cut the, cut the cord, you're, you're, the, the cable company's raping you. And it's, it's coming to a point now that many of these services cost just as much, if not more, than if it was if you were going with your cable company or satellite provider. You know, specifically, yeah. I use uh, Xfinity Comcast. Yeah, I pay them a lot of money, but I, I get decent internet. I have gig gig speed internet, and I've got uh, you know a fair amount of channels, and I'm you know paying a good paying a good amount of money for it. Um, so you you you, you kind of wonder um, why is this why is YouTube doing this? Well, YouTube decided to they're going to add more channels. They've added stuff from Viacom CBS. So you know, again, there there you go again. They got more channels like MTV. Of course, everybody watches MTV these days, right? Uh, and, um, uh, so they've added some more channels. Okay, great. Well, if they got to pay for that, they have to pay for that content. So there you go. Got to raise the prices even more. So as they keep adding more channels, there will they, I mean, the pricing is going to be just like where it is with, uh, with oh, Comcast. it's identical. It's, it's no yeah. different. It's no so, different. Yeah. So They're there really eat, no, yeah. there really is no, there is no means of cutting the cord these days. So that was the big, that was always a big topic the last few years. Now people saying that, Oh, well, I want to cut the cord. Yeah. I I don't want to add up what we're paying for right now. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> um, I, but I, don't, I do not want to but, add it up. But I wanted I wanted to spin this a little bit on Apple TV. Then, 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 you know, Apple really never announced anything during the, the, the conference other than some some improvements to uh to 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 uh, uh TV OS 14. Um but uh it, is it the worthy upgrade. It really isn't. Well, the first thing is everybody cannot stand this, but this remote I'm showing you on camera here, this remote is horrible. <laughs> it's by far the worst <laughs> remote ever. I mean, the remote that, that you can get on your iPhone to use the software based remote is, is very good. Um, right now the Apple TV has, um, has a, uh, a 12 X processor in it and you get, uh, 64, 128 gigs of, of space. And you know, that more than sufficient for what you're saving uh, when it comes to that. Now you got to decide, all right, do, do you want this device or do you want something like Roku? Do you want something like uh, Amazon fire? You can get the fire stick. You can get the fire cube. You, they have some great cho choices as well, but you know, with us being loving Apple and being in the Apple ecosystem, it's pretty tough not to want to have one of these. I'm assuming you have an Apple TV, right? Uh, there's, there are, there are two of them working and a third one. that's not hooked up because I'm rearranging my office right now. So gotcha. yeah, sorry. So, I don't have no, all three of them hooked up. No, I've got, I think I, <laughs> on your same boat, I've got two hooked up and the uh, yeah, one here, of course, in my office and, and, uh, one down in our, our TV room or, or, or uh, yeah. living room area. It gets, um, it gets quite a bit of use. So that's good to hear. So as far yeah. as the streaming goes, uh, you, you know, you, now they're including all the apps in the TVs too. So all the smart TVs have a lot of the apps already included. So you start, a, start then you start questioning, do you really need to have the Apple TV anymore? I mean, is it, is it going to be something uh, that you really want? Um, it's uh, well, I admit my TV sins. Well, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is live. Uh, it's amazing how much. So our main TV is a, is a Sony. Yeah. Android TV device. And for simplicity, basically that's all we're pretty much using anymore. Uh, the Apple TV gets a whole lot less use. Uh, the TiVo is getting less use uh, currently. Uh, uh, all, all the apps, and I can tell you how bad some of the apps are on uh, yeah. like the Who app. Yeah. Terrible app. Um, and, and Android TV is pretty good. But 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 there's more, and we'll talk a little bit about security later. Let's 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 let we'll I'll tell you some more stories about that. All right. In a well, let, bit, that's but. exactly why I want to bring this up for a good conversation yeah. about this. Yeah. Um. So, uh, yeah, you you hit on some of the other services. We're going to talk about those a little bit, like Hulu, Netflix, uh, Disney yeah. Plus. There's so many. There's so many uh, uh, different uh, services out there. There's there's an app that I that I actually I I, I believe I used I I suggested in the prior episode. It's called JustWatch.com. It's an app that you can download. Oh, I've, I've heard of that. I haven't looked at it. Yeah. And what you can do is um, you can um, 
you bring up that app and it actually gives you suggestions. You add the different, the different, the different services that you have as providers right now. So I've got it set up. So it kind of makes me sick of some of the, the how much, how many services I have. Uh, <laughs> so you got Netflix, I Amazon, said, I'm afraid to look, Dave. <laughs> Netflix, Amazon prime, HBO max, which I talked about. That's new. Uh, uh-huh. and Hulu, Amazon video. And then you have Apple TV plus you have Google play movies. If you, if you go in that ecosystem, then you have the Apple iTunes, of course, and then YouTube Premium, and then you have then CBS. IMDb has its own network and its own channel, which, of course, you can't watch on Apple TV. You have to watch it on the, uh, the Fire Stick <laughs> or the Fire <laughs> device. And it goes on and on, Roku and, and all, the other, uh, all, this, all the other services. So, I mean, one of the good things is, it, it, as, as this kind of makes, kind of opens my eyes, is you can go a la carte because there might be channels that you don't watch all the time. Like, you know what? I love watching the history channel. You know I mean? I'm a huge fan of, uh, of, uh, Pawn Stars and American, uh, 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 counting cars. And those two shows are my two favorites. Oh, okay. Of all time. Okay. And, yeah. and, but they have a lot of good stuff on history there too. Like this weekend, of course, for in America for the 4th of July weekend, they'll be doing a lot of stuff about the history, American history with the you know, independence day. So, um, so it it, it kind of opens your eyes. It's like, oh yeah, I guess it, it does give you a little more flexibility because half the channels that you get with your cable service, you don't even watch. I mean, it, it, it's right. just crazy. So, uh, so check that out. I'll have a link in the show notes again. It's called Just Watch, and JustWatch dot com is the apps is the website. Um, but then you start adding up all the prices, all these extra services. Um, luckily, the nice thing with with having a T Mobile uh, account, I get Netflix for basically free. I only pay three dollars a month for it because of the uh, I want HD uh, for our whole family. So Hulu, uh, on the other hand, starts at six bucks, and Hulu does have some good content. Um, but you also can um, go with a Hulu TV type service, similar to what YouTube is, and but that price is already at fifty dollars plus a month, but you dump cable for that you think how do you think about that yeah um amazon prime video you get that included with your prime account most of us these days have have those um then of course you got the networks and, and all those all those apps uh, link up with your if you have a comcast or infinity account uh that that's included and that's accessible through the apple tv as well so you have all these services that are available through the apple tv um and uh, CBS Access, All Access. If you, I mean, only if you're a big Star Trek fan and you want to be able to see Star Trek Discovery and Star Star Trek Picard. Well, oh, it Picard is on right is now. So good. Yeah, Picard was awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, I loved it. Uh, but as soon as it it ends, I cancel it. I mean, I I just don't find anything uh, uh, of uh, any necessary need uh, on there when it comes to that. So uh, there's a um, couple of other shows that the family is watching on that, so I can't turn CBS? it off. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and I also go. haven't finished discovery. So there you go. There yeah. You go. Yeah. You got to get on there. Um, Kitching. so there's, Kitching. there's a trick Kitching. though. I, I got to tell, tell anybody if you have a VPN, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, Netflix, wait a minute, turn off the live, turn off the yeah. live. <laughs> if you have a VPN and, uh, you uh, have a Netflix account, hmm, you, I th- you can watch content from the UK, which of course includes Star Trek, uh, Star Trek discovery and Star Trek uh, Picard are on Netflix, not in the United States, but people do it all the time. Express VPNs. Yep. That's the VPN I have is, is the, one of the most popular VPNs out there. And I tried it and it's amazing. It works. But anyway, um, and then you have Apple TV plus Apple is going crazy with content. They're buying, they're paying for all this new content. Like, I mean, they just, they just signed a big, huge deal with, with Will Smith. Um, they've got all these other movies and, and, and shows that they've added. And it really is growing uh, like gangbusters. Um, we've had yeah. Apple TV for free for the last year. I don't know if they're going to do it again when, you know, when we trade in our iPhones for a new iPhones, uh, when the iPhone 12 comes out, <laughs> I, 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 I bet not, I bet they won't. So uh, yeah, then I you got, then you got Disney plus Disney plus is huge right now. 20, 30 million subscribers already, which is crazy. Yes. And of course, everybody's all gearing up because I think it's either tonight or tomorrow night, you're going to be able to watch Hamilton, the, the recorded, uh, uh Oh, that's uh, right. Uh, yeah. I think it's tomorrow. Is it yeah. tomorrow night? Yeah, yeah I think be, it's the third. I, I yeah. can imagine that the ratings on that is going to be through the roof. And, and interesting oh, with uh, Disney Plus, they they stopped the free trials. So if you want to see it, you have oh. to pay. No free trials. They stopped that like a week week or two, but prior to announcing the Hamilton, and this is the actual the actual uh, Broadway show that. Uh, with Lynn Men, yeah, the original the, cast, the, yeah. original cast from New York. It was recorded a number of years ago, and they've been holding on to it. But then you got the the bundle package if you want to get Hulu a basic with Disney Plus and ESPN Plus. Who watches ESPN Plus? Especially these days, 
uh, $13 a month for that. And then Peacock, another one that's just come on. NBC's got their own uh, service. Right now, they're including it with uh, the Xfinity service, so with uh, Comcast. So you can watch all the content from Peacock right now through your X1 box uh, with that. So it just uh, keeps okay. going on and on. There's just so much content, and you, you get so you, you get so perplexed to how are you gonna uh, how are you gonna be able to watch this stuff. Nice thing about Xfinity Comcast, they have a beta version of their stream app that works on the Roku, but it's not working on Apple TV. So why, why wouldn't they want to jump in that audience, you know? Um, so. Because uh, they're competitors. Yeah. So it, 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 yeah. it, it just, it, it just keeps going. I mean, um, yeah. so bottom line here is, I, I mean, my, my, our discussion here today is, just, is the Apple TV is going to be a device that's worth purchasing anymore? I mean, what, what do you think, Bob? Well, I think there's a lot of these devices where the use case of them falls off as smart TVs rise, right? Um, uh, So uh, you can buy a decent smart TV for a lot less money today than you could the day before yesterday. And it's, I mean, you know, that's, that's headed to zero right now. I mean, the cost of that's headed to zero right now. And there's some things about that, which we'll talk about here in just a second, which of why that cost is going to zero. But um, it, uh, it it's a fascinating, it's, it's a fascinating subject. And the, the quality of the picture and all that has gotten so good. The, the software on some of them, and the Sony Android TV is pretty good. The LG stuff, my my son and son-in-law and daughter have an LG TV uh that I've played with and it's not bad. Uh my father-in-law bought a Samsung smart TV. It's not so good. Um anyway, but everybody's working hard I think to make to to keep you in their experience and that's what's going on. And so the big thing about the Apple is, is you brings the gaming and, and a bunch of stuff. So if you're into that, it's, it's kind of a, a in, an all in one sort of a shot. Uh, what did, what did Steve call it? Uh, um, uh, an ex, not an experiment. It Steve was, Jobs, uh, what did he call? Yeah. What was it? It was, what, uh, it was a, it, um, a hobby. Yeah. He, it was a hobby. Yeah. It was a hobby. And I think it's no longer a hobby. Um, mm. Uh, they're, they're they've got some fabulous content. Uh, did you did you watch that uh, preview of the foundation series that's coming? Yeah, it was on yeah, the, yeah. during the uh, during the it, keynote. Yeah, it's 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 pretty amazing. I'm sorry, I was just turning on the Apple TV so I can kind of look yeah. and comment here at the same time. Uh, um, uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty amazing. Uh, uh, yeah, like uh, I said, and, and, Apple and, is not is whole no, no holds barred. They're they're, they're no going holds all barred. Out. They're going all out they, of content uh, on this on this on this channel. Yeah. Yeah, and and I see it as a pretty viable device in a lot of ways. Uh, it's it's not cheap. I mean, you know, no. my my in laws needed a, a, a we didn't get him we got him a Roku. Was, you know, twenty nine dollars. So and, that's what that Roku know, so Express. That they could watch. I bought that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It. And and it it the thing they wanted to do is to watch the um, uh, streaming from uh, Channel Eleven, a public TV, yep. and didn't have a streaming tv so 30 dollars, you're up you're running so but if i wanted to live full-time on the apple tv i could from all the content that's available right now um yes. have access oh, yes, to all absolutely. the major networks um there is also that sir uh the service if you're familiar with it it's called lowcast that that's a uh, that's a, low, yep. uh, a an app that you can download on the apple tv as well as on the ipad and the iphone that allows you to watch all your local channels and they're they're begging you just to, to donate to them right now because as soon as you change to, getting, to another they're channel they're getting their pants sued yeah yeah oh well, i'm not sure if they're getting sued or not it's still it's, i haven't heard much about it other than the fact that it's are. great because the, the the reception on all the channels is just crystal clear it's all the local and all the hd channels um in your area and it's in certain cities across the country. I was just looking. I, I have the app here. I was watching channel the other day. So I could technically, everything that's on this, uh, I could be watching on my own. I'd have to be paying subscriptions for it. So you look at things like HBO Max. I have a subscription through HBO Max because um, that, that's included with my HBO subscription that I have with Comcast. So 
I, mm-hmm. I did not know that they had an Apple TV app for Locast. So mm-hmm. I am going to install that as soon as I go upstairs because uh, we do over the air. We have a lot of over the air chair. We use TiVo right. and, and that. Right. And off and on, we have trouble with over the air uh, with interference, local interference here. And that might be a way of, uh, of solving that problem. And uh, if you do, if you get into Plex, I've, I've, I, we did a, we did a uh, segment on Plex the other uh, uh, previous episode. Plex is accessible right from the Apple TV as well, so you can watch the yep. movies and your music and everything else. You have access to that, and then and the app ecosystem on Apple TV is is pretty awesome. I mean, you can download a lot of apps for for different content. YouTube is available. Redbox, Redbox yep. is another one. Redbox is starting getting a little late into the game. Um, my family member, my sister in law, works for Redbox, and. Um, she she's been very excited about what Redbox has been doing, and I, I'm pretty excited. And they're also including in their app you can watch live TV too. Um, so, oh, because you have okay. a lot of um, you have a lot of um, um, of those uh, other types of uh, TV services like Pluto TV and like I said IMDb TV, yeah. which which isn't on the Apple TV. It it is available through the Fire, um, but you do have a lot of uh, great content here. I mean, Crackle is another one. Uh, NBC Sports, Sky News. I mean, it's it just the, 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 the options. It's phenomenal. Endless. It's it's just you can have all these apps here. It's all in one place. And you want to watch it on a TV. You don't want it on your computer. You may not necessarily want it on your iPad. But if you have right. these services on your iPad or your iPhone, you can easily, you know, airplay it if if the app allows it um, to, uh, to that uh, device. Now, yeah. unfortunately, yeah. I know Xfinity hasn't done it. Xfinity Comcast hasn't done it yet with the stream app, but they have done it with the, uh, with, with the, with the Google, uh, the Google stream, uh, you can stream it to, to the Google, um, uh, Chromecast. Okay. Um, Chromecast. Right. So, yeah. So, but they haven't yet done it with Apple. So, you know, okay. So, but well, I, 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 you know, bottom line is here. I think Apple TV has got some, got some great value. I think, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of, uh, opportunities here to being able to watch stuff, even with videos. You know, you, if you, if you want to buy videos and rent videos, you can do that right now. Um, oh yeah, uh, that John Stewart movie that just came out. Uh, he's doing was was doing it as a pay per view only, nineteen ninety nine, just like going to the movies. Um, and you'd be able to watch it uh, through you know many of the services that are out there. Um, it is uh, got some other great options too. Being able to mirror things through AirPlay, it's more widespread than it used to be. Uh, the wallpapers right. that are on there are, are pretty pretty beautiful when they go into screen. Fabulous, screen. they're absolutely yeah. fabulous. <laughs> you got games available on it. You have your photos available on it. So it does do more things than just basic watching TV. So you do have a lot of a lot of opportunities to do that and be able to stream. Um, I've people use it all the time just to to share their screen. They want to share their computer screen. You can AirPlay right to an Apple TV, and uh, it works great. Um, so it does have a lot of great value when it comes to. Uh, and when it comes to um, what it, what it has to offer beyond just watching TV and watching content, any other uh, th- uh, closing thoughts on that? Until you uh, we move on here. Well, you gave me a couple of things. I got to go install my Apple TV. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate that. So, got low cast. Uh, what was the other? What were the other ones? Well, well I got to go look at what Redbox is doing because oh, I haven't yeah. rented a I haven't rented a video from from Redbox in forever, and I didn't know that they were doing something with local also. So I got to I just got to go I see what they're doing. It has uh, it does have some streaming. I haven't explored it deeply, but they have okay, I'll go, uh, they I'll have go look at it. they have a netflix type service where you can you can uh, oh, sign up okay. and, and you can watch movies yeah I, I knew they had that but okay yeah. well because i've used lowcast on the ipad regularly yeah, not dramatically but regularly so i want to try it on i want to try it on the apple tv absolutely so those, those are the only two things you you, you have you weren't no you didn't know about this the lowcast red box well right? there's probably some other things but those are the t- those you know the brain can only hold so much and those two yeah. stood out to me <laughs> you know, of the, of the things that I, uh, that I'm thinking about, those two stood out like, okay, go look at those, Bob, go look at those. Yeah. And, and I also installed that surreptitiously installed that other, that app you told me about. So uh, there you go. The, the watch. Yeah. Uh, the uh, TV, whatever the name of it was. I can't think of it. Just oh, watch. Uh, uh, just watch. Right. Yeah. Make sure we just got to make sure we have that uh, in the show notes for everybody. Yeah, get just um, watch in there because that looks really interesting. Press the open yeah. button so I can see it. There you go. All right. Uh, well, we got some tips I want to put out there this week. Uh, we haven't had too many of those lately with the uh, WWDC discussions over the last few weeks. So, um, for, yeah, first one a is uh, is a real cool one is um, being able to search in Apple Music by lyrics. 
I think that is really cool. That yeah, is fabulous. Being, being able to, to, if there's a word or a phrase or something, I can't remember the name of that song um, and at the moment. And it's buzzing in your head. You just don't, you, you can't remember it. And uh, all you have to do is either on the Mac or even on your iPhone or iPad, you type in some of the lyrics and it comes up and it's pretty gosh darn accurate. I, I was very, uh, uh, yeah. very impressed uh, about uh, what, what, what it can do. And uh, check that out because uh, you have to have an Apple music uh, subscription in order to do it. Right. Uh, but, but believe me, I, I think the Apple music subscription is well worth it. I mean, they, they give you a deal. It's $199 a year. And uh, you know, that, that comes out to be a pretty good deal. Uh, so yeah, it's not check bad. that out. Uh, check that out. Um, the other tip I wanted to share a little bit was, uh, was, uh, being able the ability to being able to connect two AirPods to one iPhone or iPad uh, and share it. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's actually pretty easy to do. You, if you've got two AirPods, you, you, you bring it up to the iPhone, you open up the lid, just like you're connecting an Air, AirPod like you normally do. Um, and you connect your first one and then you bring it over to the phone and then, you, and then it'll, it'll come up and it'll connect your second one. And then what it does is it allows you, like, whether, you do that, whether you do it on your iPhone or your iPad, especially on your iPad, especially if you're traveling and want to be able to listen to a movie, you know, watching together while you're sitting next to each other, um, it allows you to actually have the Air, AirPods working simultaneously so you can listen to the movie right. and be able to, and be able to, uh, to do that. So they, they added that in iOS 13, so it's, it's a great feature. I haven't tried it, like you said, in iOS 14 yet, but um, that, no, does, either. that does have... Uh, um, that it does have that option. Um, third tip is it was with the Apple watch. Apple watch has, um, has, uh, the, uh, uh, has uh, the ability of recording a voice memo right from the Apple watch. And you can say, Hey, S lady, to your watch. Say you uh, record a memo. And then of course it comes up on the display. You, you tap the, um, the, the button on your watch record uh, your message. And you don't have to have your iPhone on to do this. And then it's there. And then what happens is, of course, it records on your watch. It's going to sync to your iPhone, sync to your iPad, across all your devices over your iCloud. So a quick, easy way to be able to record a voice memo is right there, um, is right there on the watch. I actually, back a few years ago during MacStock, when I was doing a, a demo on Apple Watch, there was, uh, there was an app, a third-party app called Just Press Record, because they didn't add the voicemail yeah. feature on the Apple Watch uh, previously. So uh, now it is built in with the, the voice memo app. The voice memo app is very powerful. It has a lot of good features for somebody who just needs to yes. record something um, on all, all across all all, all, the, all devices. So uh, check that out. Um, and then uh, we've got the uh, our fourth and final tip uh, for this week: um, QR codes. Uh, we see QR codes everywhere. Of course, we saw the demo about the uh, iOS 14 and the app clips, which is very similar to what a QR code does. You go up and scan it. And, and, and in the case of app clips, it's going to actually open up a mini version of that app and be able to do something like parking or whatever. Well, QR codes have been around forever. And, it, it, you know, I just did it a few minutes ago. I wanted to set, I'm setting up an Apple TV here. I wanted to um, uh, sign into NBC sports. Well, they they were very smart with their app. They they actually had the QR code on the TV. So then I went to my iPhone, scanned it, and then it said, "Oh, we, we see you trying to connect your NBC app to your Comcast account. So we'll sign you in automatically. Boom, you're done." So, and then I've done that before with the scanning of uh, uh, of QR codes, just like you're finding out information about something. What are some examples you uh, have you used uh, QR codes for about? Uh, well. <laughs> I've been doing home kit stuff. And so there's the, the there home kit code and, and, and it's like, you got to find it and, and, you know, playing with security cameras and stuff and everything uses that sort of a little box code and the home kit codes. And, and that Google has, has that sort of a thing on their, um, uh, cameras and, and that equipment. So a lot of, a lot of devices are using that, you know, so they embed that device ID right. In, in print effectively on, on the devices, which is makes it a lot easier than getting a magnifying glass out and trying to figure it out. So, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, so yeah. QR codes are awesome. I mean, uh, and, and, and the technology will just continue but now with NFC and, and being able to bring your phone to any device and be able to scan something, it's, it's going to work even better. I mean, it just happened when I, when I needed to sign into my YouTube account on my Apple TV it says bring uh, your phone close to, bring your phone close to the, to the Apple TV and, and, and make sure it's on the same network and then just tap your account right here. Automatically knew my phone was on the same network and signed, signed it in all those fumbling yeah. times of having to go with the, with oh. the remote and try to sign in. It's crazy. 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 
And then yeah, it's, it's what really Apple amazing. also what Apple also did was they they extended the QR code not just to the camera. They now added a QR code reader that can be added to the control center in uh, on the iPhone. Right. So, yeah. And all you basically have to do there is you, you and I did I did a whole um, uh, discussion on the on the control center. Um, all you had to do is you go into the uh, into settings and go to the control center and you know the customize the control center and then there's a choice there adding the QR code a reader to the control center and then all you got to do is swipe down from the r- r- right corner of your iPhone and, uh, tap the icon for QR code and then you get to a lot quicker than having to open up your camera and then scan again yeah. so two ways yeah. of being able to Pretty scan fast. QR codes uh, and, and 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 it's it's a great feature so um with the so with that, uh, with a little bit, little bit of remaining time we have left, did anything you got going on in the audio world that uh, that you want to share? I'll put you on a spot here, but uh, oh, maybe, maybe all kinds of been, things. But anything uh, specific uh, iOS related or no, nothing iOS related. Unfortunately, it's uh, uh, I'm I'm building music servers right now, so it's, you know, okay, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, heat sink. Uh, heat sink compound and running up and down <laughs> stairs between the lab and the uh, and and the speakers and that doesn't sound right and dragging monitors up and down the stairs and wait a minute yeah. this is all for music just listen to the i uh, you know no it's not good enough for me so yeah, you're, you are uh, a crazy I, I'm, man with, I'm, with music <laughs> well i'm i'm building music servers for a couple of my customers so that oh. that that's part of it and um it, it it's a lot of fun it, it's yep. a lot of work and I get to listen to a lot more music when I'm doing that. So that, that's, uh, that's one of the things we're doing. Uh, I've been playing a little bit more with uh, mixing Apple and Google together as you know, how, how they, how, how well they play together. So how, how the, you know, the, the Google applications and, uh, and, and the Google services integrate with uh, can be integrated in with mm-hmm. Macs and Apple and stuff like that. Um that might be a little beyond what, um, uh, and I was gonna, I, 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 we could talk maybe just for a second, if you want to talk about, yeah. uh, smart devices and security. Oh um, yeah. Let's, let's hit that real quick. Yeah. And, and I was just, I was just pulling up. So, um, I, I use something in, in my network here at home. Uh, it's a little computer called a Raspberry Pi. Oh, yeah. And this is, this is a little techie. So if I go too deep, yell at me, okay? Right. So I run a piece of software on there that's free. It's called Pi-hole and P-I-H-O-L-E. And what it is, it's a black hole for bad uh, domain requests. So it blocks traffic. And so I just pulled it up to, and um, 11.4% of the traffic of the DNS queries Mm -hmm. of devices on my network, which is, it says 73 devices. So that's probably about right uh, between the, between the two houses. So I support my in-laws who live next door. They're on my same network. Um, So 11.4% of the traffic is blocked. And that's, uh, there's 77,000 total queries and it keeps ticking up <laughs> and 8,800 of them, 8,900 of them are blocked. Guess where a lot of those queries are coming from? Google. Would you like to guess where? Google. No, no, no. The devices. Oh, so your iPhone. So, so let me tell you that. Let me, let me tell you the baddest device on the network is a Samsung TV. Ah, right. The Samsung TV, I block, if they're watching TV, I block hundreds of requests an hour from that, from that Samsung TV. Now on my Sony TV, uh, I have it set so it doesn't ask a bunch of those things. So still blocks. Guess what the worst, app, well, wait a minute. Last time I checked, guess what the worst app for sending data about what you're watching is? Mm. I don't know. Go ahead and tell us. CBS All Access. Really? They okay. I I I block dozens and dozens and st- every time every time they they start a show, stop a show, back and forth, boom, boom blocks it. I haven't looked at the Hulu app to see how bad it is. Yeah. So this thing blocks all, almost all of that kind of stuff. Um and it frustrates people around the house because they they <laughs> my father-in-law opens up a web page, right? And where this picture was on his web page, there's a blank spot on his web page. And I said, Jim, that's the blocker. It's blocking this people tracking you. 
And, and so after right, I, we've had this, in the, we've had this run in the house for, in, on a system for about, th- about, well, about four months now. And okay. um, it's enlightening, shall we say. So All that right. was, you, uh, you did warn me. You know, we're going to get a lot I, I told geeky. you um, going down a lot of, cause I think most, that's a lot, uh, that's, most that's listeners are probably stuff. not going that extensive. No, no, but I told you I mean, we were going down. Hill. But yeah. let, let me tell you something it's about audio about it. just because it, th- th- there's something about audio that's fascinating. So uh, I test all the smart home equipment for my customers. Cause that's one of the things they do smart home. Customers. So we kind of migrate from, you know, from Google to Apple to Amazon and stuff like now. And so now we're in the Amazon is in the drawer. Okay. Probably where Amazon belongs and, and Google and Apple are in the house. Okay. And, um, so Google, Google knows my voice, right? Cause I trained Google, for my, but I didn't have anybody else trained. And, um, Google does not like my wife's voice at all. Loves my <laughs> Siri doesn't mind my wife's voice. But Google does not like my wife's voice at all. When when she when when she tells the the Google lady to close the bathroom blinds, the Google lady does not understand her at all. Um, and um, so I, I the next phase of this is to put my wife through the pain of training the Google lady to her voice to see if that works. So that that's kind of fascinating. Uh, we're testing the Google security cameras. That's what we're doing, what we're doing right okay. now. So the little Google home hub where you can say, you know, HG instead of HS, the HG and show me the, show me the backyard. Okay. Right. And I like that. That's That's actually pretty nice. Um, and the only reason we're doing that is they finally figured out how not to charge you $6 a month per camera. They were charging you $5 per month per camera in the system. Crazy. Now, Apple is extending and expanding their system that does not go to the cloud unless you want it to, does not get charged for, well, it gets charged for if you because it uses your iCloud storage, right? So, but it doesn't, it isn't add another added on fee. And there's more and more cameras and things coming into mm-hmm. the Apple ecosystem, which tries to protect your security and your privacy. So that's kind of where I was going with all of this. Um, yeah. they, uh, I've only played with one set of cameras that work, the little Logitech circles. They work reasonably well. Uh, basically, almost all the security camera stuff I've played with here in the last two years is borderline functional. Uh, yeah. It's well, hard for most people to use. I have, um, it's just hard. Lot- I have the wise indoor cameras, but wise is I had just introduced an outdoor wireless camera. Uh, I put a, put a pre-order in on those. So I'm going to be, can't wait to get those and, uh, oh, do, yeah. uh, do a discussion yeah. of them. They're not terribly expensive. I got two wireless cameras. I think it was 120 bucks, which is nothing. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. My, my brother's playing with the little blink cameras. He was going to get some of those. Yeah. Um, I don't so, know if he ever did them. So we'll I'll have to check in with him and see what happens. Yeah, um, we'll definitely, uh, I've been looking for more home kit and, and Apple video support uh, cameras after the uh, keynote. Yeah, Sounds Wise, like is, coming. Wise is definitely uh, supporting on the home kit. So, uh, okay. okay. I'll, I'll, I'll another go look topic. The uh, once the cameras arrive, oh, we'll definitely be topic. talking about them. Yeah. Well, well yeah. Yeah. We'll about yeah. It. Especially if they have outdoor um, yeah, I can't wait. It's yeah, wireless. Yeah, I, I want to see that. The indoor ones, you have to plug them into power to each location. So they're kind of used. You, well, you really but, can't put them outside. See, so. uh, my outdoor, my, all the outdoor ones are plugged into power too. Whether yeah. uh, So I've used uh, uh, power over Ethernet cameras, uh, AC, AC powered cameras. Right. So the Google, the Google Nest ones are all plugged into AC. Um, right. uh, you know, you got you to gotta drive those LEDs and... The Nest app is getting really annoying right now. Another time. <laughs> Another time. <laughs> All right, let's, yes. let's, uh, let's okay. go ahead and uh, type, wrap it uh, up. Thanks, thanks enough for being here, Bob. And uh, we'll uh, uh, just a second. Let's go ahead and wrap things up for this week. Uh, that is a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address, feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at InTouchWithIOS, or you can subscribe in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts and many others. Or better yet, just go to our website, intouchwithios.com. For all the links to all the ways to listen to us are there, all on the right side. Just click one of those links, you'll find a way to listen to us. I am Dave Ginsberg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. Bob uh, Fairbairn, thanks for being here. Where can people find You're you? welcome. Thank you. Uh, you find me at uh, uh, 
Twitter's a reasonable place, Bob Fairbairn on Twitter. Uh, I've got a website, bobfairbairn.com. Uh, yeah, pretty easy to find. All right. Yeah, we got you in the show notes. Appreciate you being here, Rob, and uh, we'll have you on again. And everybody, thanks Thank for you. listening. We really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed the show, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Thank you.